You'd be forgiven for assuming, at a glance, that Kentucky Route Zero is just any other point-and-click adventure game. While it's true that you interact with the world largely through pointing and clicking, it doesn't feel like a point-and-click adventure game. It'd be better described as interactive fiction. Kentucky Route Zero is an episodic, audio-visual poem, with a world steeped in the kind of magical realism and macabre Americana found in the works of David Lynch. The story we're told inside that world is a bleak odyssey tackling inequality, debt, and the destructive growth of capitalism. It's a saga that can't have lasted more than a couple of weeks in the timeline of the game, but for the rest of us, Kentucky Route Zero has been seven years in the making. Its first act came out in January 2013, and its fifth and final act arrived this week. I think Kentucky Route Zero is captivating, thoughtful, and beautiful, so much so that it's already a strong contender for one of my favourite games of 2020. To explain why, I want to talk about how it differs from other point-and-click experiences, and how it tells the story it has to tell. Thing is, Kentucky Route Zero is a really tricky game to talk about. The game and its story are so heavily intertwined with the message it's trying to send that it's a struggle to talk about one without talking about the other. Like with my video on Disco Elysium, which you can check out by clicking the link in the corner of the screen now, things are going to get a little bit conceptual. This is really challenging to pin down though, as it always is with art, so here's my best swing at it. Point-and-click adventure games are typically characterised by the wealth of puzzles that you have to solve, all intertwined like a big Rube Goldberg machine. Monkey Island's elaborate rubber chicken pulley systems and Day of the Tentacles time travel meddling are both memorable examples. Kentucky Route Zero isn't really a game about puzzles, though. Your pointing and clicking is all a means to progress the story. If you click on the ground, the character you're controlling at that time will go there. Walk up to people or objects of interest, and you'll be able to click to talk with, look at, and interact with them. But there isn't an inventory. There are no Scum Engine-style verbs. There's one puzzle at the very beginning of the game, which involves turning off your lantern to locate a glow-in-the-dark D20, but beyond that, everything you do in Kentucky Route Zero is about uncovering more of the story. Your reward for any and all of your actions is, more often than not, a conversation. Sometimes it's an inner monologue, other times a tape recording or a document from an archive. There isn't an awful lot of doing for Kentucky Route Zero's characters. It's a constant, flowing, winding journey from point A to point B to point C and so on, stopping at these intervals to soak up the atmosphere and meet new people. In a lot of ways, Kentucky Route Zero feels like a long-haul truck journey. You stop for petrol, pick up the odd hitchhiker, and keep on driving to location after location in a sort of half-asleep, dreamlike haze. Alec Meir put it quite well in his review of Act 5 for the Rock Paper Shotgun site, where he said that Kentucky Route Zero is not a game about choice of action, but about choice of behaviour. You don't exactly have control over the main cast of characters in Kentucky Route Zero, at least not in the conventional way we've come to expect from games. Initially, it appears that Antiques delivery driver Conway is the main protagonist, and that you experience the game from his point of view. This quickly changes as Shannon, a struggling TV repairwoman, joins you on your search for Dogwood Drive, the enigmatic destination of Conway's final delivery. You're introduced to her by being put in control of her meeting Conway for the first time. As more of the game's cast is introduced, and some join your wayfaring convoy, you alternate between each character's perspectives wildly, sometimes tens of times in individual conversations. But you're never really… in control. You're more like the director or one of the screenplay writers of a performance, or even an omnipresent force with influence over the cast. In dialogue, your list of options to carry a conversation can be from any of that conversation's participants. Rather than deciding how one character responds to another, you shape the discussion as a whole, regardless of which character you're controlling the movements of. Even then, though, the way clicking to move is translated visually in-game is you manifesting a glowing, fire ant-like bug that the character you're influencing at that moment in time is drawn to. Even here, Kentucky Route Zero subtly reinforces that you aren't playing 
playing as these people, just shaping how they behave and how they feel about what's happening to them. These characters aren't meant to be avatars for the player, they're characters that we observe and influence. As the game goes on, we make fewer and fewer choices about what the characters say and do, as actions earlier on in play begin to shape how they act on their own accord. Or more accurately, the characters become more the people that your dialogue options hint at them being beneath the surface. By the fifth act, you barely have control over anything at all, most of the conversations being ones that you're just listening in on. Because of how gradual that transition from agent to observer is, and because Kentucky Route Zero presents itself as that kind of experience in a number of subtle ways from the get-go, that loss of real control isn't jarring or irritating. It's almost like you've helped raise these characters to where they are, and in the seven years that they've existed, they've grown up and don't need as much guidance anymore. Between each of Kentucky Route Zero's main acts, developers Cardboard Computer released a series of intermissions to the story. They take place outside of the journey of the main cast, following various supporting characters and fleshing out the rest of the world and the goings on within it. These interludes are a little bit experimental, with mechanics and narrative styles which differ from the five acts, but which recontextualise those acts in such a way that I think they're essential to play. The first is Limits and Demonstrations, the intermission most closely resembling the way the acts of Kentucky Route Zero play, only in place of your journey with the main cast, you're following three people visiting an art exhibition created by another character in the game. The Entertainment is an experimental theatre production that was designed to be played in VR. It's set in the lower depths, a rundown dive bar, and alternates between conversations happening between the owner and its guests, and disembodied snippets of reviews of the play. Here and there along the echo is a telephone that you use to dial the number of a hotline for the Bureau of Secret Tourism. There are various paths you can follow, each with their own snippets of lore, and their own secrets which allude to people, places, and goings-on seen in the preceding acts. Un Pueblo de Nada puts you in the shoes of one of a crew of amateur TV station producers, directing the people on camera, queuing up videotapes to be played, and conversing with other crew members, all while the storm raging outside slowly seeps into the building. These intermissions keep the pace of Kentucky Route Zero as an overall experience quite dynamic. They're each explorations of interesting ideas that are equal parts enjoyable, intriguing, and fitting. So, what's Kentucky Route Zero about? That's a difficult discussion to have, at least not without spoiling large parts of a story that I feel is best experienced firsthand. I'm going to at least try, though, so that you have something to go on if you still need more convincing to give Kentucky Route Zero a go for yourself now that the whole game is out. In a couple of ways, I'd compare Kentucky Route Zero to some films by surrealist director David Lynch. Both Kentucky Route Zero and many of Lynch's movies embody the aesthetic and the ethos of Americana, that idyllic folklore of the American experience. Winding and overlapping highways, trucks, gas stations, dive bars, white picket fences, country music, horses, stuff like that. But where Lynch uses Americana as a means of exploring its seedy underbelly, Kentucky Route Zero uses it to tell a story about how America and the people living in it have suffered at the hands of capitalism. The pit stops you run into on the twisting roads of Kentucky and the enigmatic Zero itself are all shattered remnants of the ever-growing control of Consolidated Power Co., an aptly named electrical company that has bought up and since abandoned much of Kentucky's infrastructure. Graveyard mines filled with the remains of its workers and their possessions, dilapidated museums built on top of bulldozed towns, and once loving idyllic hamlets washed away by flooding and sparsely populated by the people who stayed behind, and the ghosts of the people who came before. There's a recurring theme of debt and the guilt that it makes people feel. Elaborating on the way this theme manifests would ruin its impact in a way, but needless to say, it's all pretty bleak. But Kentucky Route Zero ends with a sort of ambiguous, distant hope. It's a pragmatic tale of remorse, obligations, and suffering beyond our control, but an equally pragmatic exploration of how we might keep moving in the wake of it. 
I love Kentucky Route Zero so, so much. Without exaggeration, it's one of the most astonishing games I've ever played. At the very least, I can say with certainty that it will be one of my top games of 2020, one that I'll be thinking about a lot throughout this year. It's a measured, patient and articulate journey that takes the time to give nuance to its message while engrossing you throughout. There's more I can say, more I want to say. The music is absolutely gorgeous, both the instrumentals and the songs, breathing even more life into the world than the words on the screen could do by themselves. The art style is polygonal, but also colourful and almost psychedelic, complementing the magical realism of the game. There's a wealth of visual metaphor, and every sharp corner of Kentucky Route Zero is dripping in subtext and poetry. I won't say any more though, not here at least. I want you to play Kentucky Route Zero, experience its ebbs and flows, drive down its roads, meet its inhabitants, uncover its secrets, because I found it really quite moving, and I think if you give it time, it'll move you too. I hope you enjoyed this little video about Kentucky Route Zero and why I love it, and found it helpful in giving you an idea of why you should play it too. If you did, why not give it a like and subscribe to Rock Paper Shotgun while you're down there. You can let us know what you thought of Kentucky Route Zero in the comments if you've played it, and if you'd like us to talk about it some more. There's a lot to talk about. Cheers very much for watching, and hopefully see you again soon.